tonight we're going to talk about so the god talk guys is here in this segment yes under the umbrella of a human among humans yes which is under the umbrella of be live yes which is under the umbrella of cctv yes okay i just wanted to make sure oh good okay so you wanted you wanted to talk about love and i'm happy to uh, or, be, or be interviewed about it, if you'd like. Hmm. Now, we were talking just a few minutes ago. We do this every week before we come into the studio here. We talk about what we're going to talk about. And this evening, we're, we wanted to talk about what we talk about when we talk about love. Because love is certainly a central idea in Christianity. It's the central teaching of Jesus, um, as far as I can tell. I wonder if, if, if all, I think probably would all Christian denominations um, believe this? I believe that that's so. And, and the Catholic Church, though, does. For sure. Oh, absolutely. That the heart of Jesus is to be loving. That love is the word that is at the heart. And God of is love. We used, I used to sing in Catholic Church. Oh, yeah, yeah. They'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Oh, yeah, yeah. They will know we are Christians by our love. And I remember the Baltimore Catechism, the catechism that I grew up with. Yes. Which was a question and answer format. What is God? God is love. There it is. Now, the interesting question, which I, of course, in the Greek, there's many words for love. Mm -hmm. One is eros, mm -hmm. which is passionate. Yep. Passionate, and physical, a god. And erotic. A, and there's a god. Uh-huh. Eros is a god. Mm -hmm. And there's agape, which is caring love. Mm -hmm. And agape was the kind of love that was expressed in the Last Supper, as I understand it. That the, that the meal uh, that is now recreated uh, on Sundays in most Christian churches, uh, the meal uh, of the bread and wine, yes. is, was also called agape. Yes, so it's, I understand so that. Yes, I, I I don't like the split between eros and agape. I like it. actually in English it's better in some ways. Love love could be both. Then it's good that we have this word. Yes. That is a large suitcase. Yes, I like. And can I, carry a lot. In. Yes, I like love being both um, the passion and the caring. Well, this is a thing. That interests me, and it interests me especially, perhaps, as a, um, I was going to say as a Catholic, but I guess I've already said it as a Catholic, um, because when I grew up in the church, the church's teachings around um, eros was very structured, strictured, uh, and and I think more limited than it is now. Although some would say that the, the doctrine has not changed, uh, the eternal word has not changed, but what has changed has been, what, maybe the, the presentation? I don't know, I feel like I'm, I'm wandering off, but I'll just say for myself personally, yes. that I often wonder about the relationship between the erotic love and uh, the more platonic love, if you will, or the love of God. It's like, what is, what is the connection, and how am I to navigate these different kinds of love? Yes. Got any answers for me? Yes, well, the platonic love is erotic, by the way. It's just more what we'd call tantric. Socrates loved, his, uh, physically uh, loved his students, mm -hmm. but he didn't he didn't So are you act saying that, that he was, he, oh, didn't act he did not it. act on it? He didn't act on it. There's a famous dialogue called, it's, it's translated by the academics as, the symposium, mm -hmm. but in Greek it's the drinking party, mm -hmm. and they sit around a um, table, and they say, you know, we've had conversations about the gods and about politics, but we never talk about eros. Hmm. Okay, everybody, we're going to have a conversation. Have another drink and uh, we'll yes, talk about let's eros. Let's talk about eros, and they go around and say what eros is, and Socrates is accused after the whole party's over. This young, passionate, beautiful man, Alcibiades, comes in and says, you know, let me tell you about Socrates. I loved him. I wanted him to be my lover. I, after a party, I invited him into my home 
And I said, you, you don't have anywhere to go to sleep? Sleep next to me because it's too far for you to go home. And he slept next to me all night and nothing happened. And then he got up in the morning and went back to his family. Hmm. Hmm. So erotic love for Plato, it's there. Socrates loves the young boys, but it's tantric. It's, it's platonic tantric. It is, I can feel it. Hmm. And I think, I, I think between Jeshua and his students, that would be, that, that would be similar. Jeshua and Jesus. Yes. That he, lo- well, he was, as, he's always called Jeshua or Joshua. He was never Jeshua called. in the in the Jewish yeah, Bible, yeah, in the yeah, Jewish by him, language. He's never he was never in his life called Jesus. I hope he listens when people pray to Jesus. He has to say, "Oh yes, that's my you know." Because we'll be oh, like, that's for me. That's me. I, I that calls for me. Sorry, right? Because you changed your name, right? So you you it might be hard to know if someone calls you by your old name. Well, I want to I want to tell you something mm. about I want to mm. say a little something about love because I'm reminded of this as we're talking about it now that yesterday. I drove up from Virginia up here to uh, my home in Cambridge. I had spent a wonderful week away with my family down in Virginia. Uh, pretty much a different couch every night, but I got to see everybody and uh, have meals at every house. And, um, and it was finally time to come back. And on the way back, I stop at a rest stop and I've been driving for a while, so I'm, I'm kind of stiff. So I get out and I start walking around the rest stop. And it, it's quite beautiful. It's in Pennsylvania, just outside of Harrisburg. And um, it's a, there are a bunch of hills, and at the top of the hill, there are these picnic tables. And I see, as I'm down in the parking lot, that way, 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 way up on the top of the hill, uh, there's this couple sitting at a picnic table and, and eating lunch. And so in my travels, um, circumnavigating the perimeter of the rest area, I reach the top where they are. And I, as I'm passing by, I make a comment on the weather, something about the uh, the endless summer, because until uh, today, it was just one long hot day after another. And we're just, um, we're not talking about anything deep. We're talking about the weather. We're talking about driving. But just in connecting with these folks, I'm feeling this energy coming up from my base chakra as my... Uh, a one-time girlfriend would say, up from my base chakra, up into, up in, in, through my heart, and into my throat, and into my head, and it's just like going up and going out. And it's, uh, it comes with tingling, and it's, it's not like this, um, like I feel uh, an erotic desire for this couple, but I definitely feel energized. It's not like I, I am... Um, uh, aroused. It's not that at all. But there is this energy that is pulsing through me just by connecting with these other human beings. And so that, that's the connection for me, I guess, between um, that that energy can connect both Eros and the more platonic love, if we could call it that. Wait, oh, well, I'm, I'm insisting, I'm not insisting, I know Eros is platonic love, but it's Eros for, for Socrates and probably for Plato, it's, we would call it, as you described it, a tantric love. Mm-hmm. So I, 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 I want... To borrow from a different... Yes, it's, it's, it's... Tradition. It's, it, it's the energy, the, rise, the erotic energy arising in us, but not limiting us, through our heart, mm-hmm. through our mind, through our crown, and, and therefore it's not acted on in, a, in an ordinarily sexual way, but that energy is there. Yeah. And that energy is there to care for and for Socrates to teach, to educate. Those, those were... To, so it's, a, it's about... To create justice, Martin. I mean, I mean... To take that energy and funnel that energy, to channel that energy in a way that, um, that serves. And it is that energy. It, that energy is that. that. I mean, people like Martin Luther King, too, where it was love energy or, or Gandhi. It was powerful energy to change the world. Well, some would say, and I think that I'm one of those, that that energy is who we are. That 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 love is our essential nature. Yeah, Gandhi would call it Satyagraha, truth force. Hmm. That's what, that, that that is that. We just have other words for mm-hmm. it, and the words matter. For the and emphasis matters. For the Buddhist, compassion was was crucial. Mm-hmm. Uh, and ca- compassion is an aspect. Of, of this, of this, yeah. yes. 
Um, for we in the West, it's it's, uh, and for Socrates, it was much more, uh, even pl- Platonic eros was way more physical. I mean, he really would go down. He'd do something like we're doing, but it would be in the, in the, um, by the by in the country by some streams of water. He would go to with, the, with a young student, and they would talk about eros. Hmm. Okay, Socrates, what is eros? His name was Phaedrus. And you're you're saying that nothing happened between them. No, that was they crucial. Just that was crucial for Socrates. That was crucial as a teacher. Uh huh. Crucial, crucial, crucial. Yeah. No, yeah. I. This is not. And he wasn't Christian. Yeah. This is not sexual in the ordinary sense. Uh, but it is a highly. That energy is there. All of it is there. And. That's our life force. Yes. That, that energy is, is who we are. Yes. And remember... That's what brings us into the remember world. Remember we talked about in one show that Socrates even has in the drinking party, and it's great calling it the drinking party. That's way different than calling it the symposium. Is it making you thirsty? It, it's very physical. It's I do have something to drink, but I won't at the moment. <laughs> but it's very physical. It's the drinking party. They're getting drunk. Yeah. And they're sitting on couches and they're having a wild time. And drinking and eating grapes and cheese. And I'm not sure what, what they're eating, but they're certainly drinking a lot. Yeah. And that's very important because it's not just a symposium. We will now, st- let's have a symposium. And get somebody up to the, yes, the yeah. lectern. And so Plato is erotic and platonic love is erotic, but you don't act on it in the ordinary mm. erotic mm. way. You... God, Eros is a god. And remember, we talking. I should give you a quiz. A few weeks ago, I, Socrates, when it came his turn, said, you know, we've been talking about God, but we've been talking about Eros, but who is Eros? Your question. Where did he come from? How was he born? Who were his parents? And he gave that story, if you remember, that he claims to be told him by a woman prophetess. And the woman prophetess, I'll remind us, um, said there's a huge drinking party, just like what they were having. Everyone was having a great time. So are, are you giving me the origin of Eros? Is that what you're giving according me? To, right? Yes, according, okay. to, according to Socrates. Okay. But he's playing. He's making up this story. He's saying... He's making woman, it up as he's going along. Yes, he said this woman told me, but it, well, the woman also told him why everyone else who had went God previously were, were mistaken. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this woman he had interviewed with supposedly many years. But he said, I t- learned this from a wise woman and an older woman. Mm-hmm. I learned it from an older woman, and she told me that we're having a drinking party, just like we're having now, and that there was one God that was there. His name was Plenty, Fullness. Oh yeah, 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 sure. And then, and he was had such a great time at the party. He comes out drunk, and there was someone who wasn't invited, a mere mortal like us. Poverty, food stamps, mm-hmm. government assistance. I like plenty. I always got so much, and he's so beautiful. And he was drunk, and she lay next to him, and she got a child. She wanted what she got, and she hmm. went for it, and she got it. And the child's name is Eros. Eros. Eros is the child of plenty mm-hmm. and poverty. Mm-hmm. And Jesus, in his own, or Jeshua, in his own way, so it was he's he was full of God, full of, um, you know, eros agape, full of it, full and complete, and emptied himself, needing more, needing to connect to you. Hmm. Well, that's what the gospel, that's what Paul says, that's what St. Paul says, um, that Jesus came into the world to empty himself. Yes. I mean, it's almost, those exact words. Nietzsche, in his great way, his witty way, said, Christianity is Plato for the people. Hmm. Good old Nietzsche. Good sums, old Nietzsche. Sums it up in a Good few old words. Nietzsche. <laughs> Went <words>. crazy. <laughs> yes. Couldn't take. Good. Couldn't take all the enlightenment. Yeah. Well, he had it was trouble too much. about. He was too lonely. Yes. Yeah. So here we are now at the the midpoint of the show. So now I have the, more. The I point. have more que- No, I have many more questions. So questions that I'm sure that I can answer. Yeah, I'm positive. Let me just put on my yes. crown of or wisdom. Elizabeth will and Gail will and Janet will. We have our audience. They will answer for us. Uh, I, I told you. So when we love, right? When we love, these great. Even when friendship has happened repeatedly. Yeah. Let alone in in romantic love. Mm-hmm. 
how do we navigate it? I told you when we one story that there's this wonderful couple, um, Antra and Richard Borowski, who teach about love. And are therapy. you are you friends of theirs or? I was a th I was a um, I came there for therapy. Okay. For just for with her, she was mm -hmm. very very. I always left feeling I was new. And and so you felt like you got some instruction in in loving. Uh, yes, uh, in in this beginning beginning to I was a long road. I, yeah. I certainly wasn't there. Yeah. There, but she gave us an example um, when they went. I told you this before him when they went to give a lecture on love. She wanted to bring flowers. They're running late. He says, "I don't want to stop for flowers. I want to get there so I can." relax and be there. She says, we got to have flowers. It's about love. It's, we need something beautiful mm. there. And they're arguing. And she said, the way they decide is to see who more passionately wants what they want. So they, they put it on a scale. They, they somehow are able to do that. They, I think that's brilliant. Yes, but they have written that sex is not important for marriage. So it might be easier to do that when the power, their erotic powers are not there. I'll bet maybe friendship sex is, is not important to marriage when you're older. Yes, that's what when they, you're that's younger. What they wrote. It's different. I'm harder like, to say that. I would not say that even at this advanced age of yeah. seventy-two. Yeah, but so but I'm just saying that might be a little easier. Oh, maybe good close friends as we are, those things can arise also. That you know what you want something, I want something. How do we reconcile? How do we do that? You know, we don't we don't live if and if we were living in the same condo, it gets even more. We don't. Oh, sure. Yes, yeah, so that sure. gets let alone. There's more at stake. Or we're roommates. Yeah. It's yeah. very hard as roommates. Yeah. Someone just told me the her, her roommate makes um, recycles. Not recycle. Not recycles. Um, does um, whatever you do with compost composting, mm -hmm. and the juice is under the sink. <laughs> And the bugs go there, and she doesn't like it. And the, the, the roommates say, "Don't try to control what we're doing. We like composting this way." So, what do you do with stuff like that? Well, that's the bottom line. That yeah. question is the bottom line. I mean, when yeah. when we come into yeah. conflict, there are healthy ways, useful ways, practical ways to find a way through, and there are ways that are not so healthy and not so. Practical, and it might not be. It's very challenging. The the leader of oh, yeah. the the brilliant man, Marshall Marshall, um, what's his last name? I forget. But who started nonviolent communication? Mm -hmm. His famous example is the man's reading a newspaper. His wife is talking to him. She says, "I don't want you to read the newspaper," and he keeps reading, and she keeps complaining, uh, and she says, "That's no way to treat someone you love." And he keeps reading. Hmm. And according to Marshall, that's okay. He can keep reading. When I told this to my very loving sister-in-law, she said, that's outrageous. And I, tell, I know another couple, and when they got married, the husband said, now that you marry me, you have to wash and cook and clean. That's what wives do. And I told that to my sister-in-law. She said, that's outrageous. Hmm. And it's the same thing. Hmm. One person saying, you love me, Put down a newspaper. You love if you love me. If you love me, you'll put down a newspaper. If you love me, you'll shop, cook, and wash for me. Well, it sounds to me like it's a uh, it's a control issue. Who's in charge? Yes, one last. Who little, is in charge? One last little addition to that. So this couple goes to the therapist. This is a joke. No. Or this is a parable. This is true. This is a parable. It's a true story. Whatever okay. you want to call it. All right. And they tell this to the, 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 the wife, says, why did he keep telling me I have to cook clean and wash for him? That's outrageous. And the therapist says, uh, you could be the therapist now, what would you say? Well, I would, um, I'll tell you what I would say, but it will probably not advance your joke. It's not a joke. Or your story. Yes, it's well, not so a story. So why don't you just tell really, me? really happened. I will tell you what works for me. Okay. Um, but finish your story. Oh, the therapist says he can say whatever he wants. You can't control what he says. He's allowed to speak. When he, you can't, it's, a, it's a losing battle. 
if you tell someone not to speak, they'll, they can speak. Unless you, you know, you're, you're, you're violent and you wrap them up their mouth. So he can say anything he wants, the therapist said, the wise therapist, and said to her, and you don't have to do it. And that resolved the whole problem because she was trying to stop him from saying that. And the same, so here's what works this, for last, me. Just a tiny, what, last, well, this is then, your show. Yeah, so do, the do. last one is, okay. and it's the same that Marshall, who started nonviolent communication, said the same thing. She can ask him to put down the newspaper as many times as she wants to. He doesn't have to do it. That's the, that was his way of resolving these things. I'm not sure these are good examples to follow, but these are just. Well, what he's about. offering is a, a guideline or a program that if both members of that particular couple agreed to, then at least they have that in common. Well, that would be they have agreed that would be to yes. a protocol. That would be beautiful. So the protocol That's beautiful. that mm -hmm. I, that works best for me, and that I invite all of my, uh, all of those friends with whom I have some kind of conflict into, it's basically this. One person gets to talk, and the other person gets to listen. And the person who is talking can talk as long as they want. Yes. But when they stop, it's time to become the listener yes. and let the other person respond until they have said everything that they have to say. Yes. And eventually, I have found that it sorts itself out because I personally, I will get to say everything that I need to say and I will get to respond to everything that I hear, but we can do it in a way that's respectful of the other person's of, uh, it's, it becomes very much about listening as well as talking because I think in a lot of arguing where nothing really gets done where nothing um, is this a metaphor for a newspaper? yes well I'm not going to ask you to put down the <laughs> newspaper because I know that you have an agenda <laughs> But I also know that I'm talking, so I'm just going to keep on talking until I've said everything that I have to say about you in that newspaper. Yes. I think that's, that's what... I'm the, not done yet. I'm not done. I haven't agreed, though. That's my show. It is your we show. We have agreed that. We have agreed on that. This yeah. is your show. Yeah. My show is the one that follows not this for one. very much longer is this my show. Now keep going. I'm enjoy teasing. it while you no, can. You've got five minutes. No, no. You've that's... got four minutes uh, yes. to enjoy the power <laughs> because... At 7.30, the power is mine. And once I start talking, I'm going to keep going until I've said everything that I want to say. So please, please continue. <laughs> please, let me not stop you. Enjoy your three and a half. Your three and a half. Going a little, little, little. <laughs> Come on, we're running out of time. I don't have to. So, <laughs> sum up. I'm going to invite you to sum up. What was this show about? I what was this show about? This presumably was a God Talk Guys episode. Can you bring it back? Can you bring it home, Michael? So we talked about Eros. We talked about Platonism. We talked about Socrates sitting on the side of the river with his young protege. We talked about newspapers. We talked about... Help me bring it all together so that our viewers can leave thinking... What a great episode that was. These guys are just amazing. Did you see the magic that they worked on that show? Well, You've got two minutes to do that. <laughs> this is an example of him giving me time to speak. You should see this what is your show. they do to happen when it's his show. This was my show, and the last five minutes he was telling you that. <laughs> So this Take is, it away. Yeah. <laughs> Take it away. <laughs> I rest my case. That's my summary. Let's see, this was about love. That's it, where we began. And we're actually, part two of this will end up being, because I had no opportunity to talk about the love that I wanted to talk about. So we'll be picking this up in just a few minutes. Apparently. Yeah. <laughs>
In the meantime, <laughs> Michael, Michael is about to sum up what we just said. <laughs> sum it up in a sentence or two <laughs> so that our viewers can write it down, it down and take it and meditate on it for the rest of their lives. It will be that wise and that profound as soon as he says it. And he will say it within the next minute and a half. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is an example. Well, just that was. This is an example of what happens, and we're friends, so we don't live together. So it's 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 it's, and we're platonic, tantric, loving friends. We're, that's and even here you see what happens when supposedly it's my show and I can speak when I want to, and Michael is of course even silently taking all the attention from all the... <laughs> So this is, this is what happens when it's supposedly my show. But we'll stay tuned to see if I'm even allowed to be on the set during this show. Maybe I'll be in the audience and an anonymous person asking questions. But thank you for joining us. This is an example of the challenges. I think the heart of it is, from what Michael is saying, that when we love someone at least they, you want them to express themselves and you to express yourself. You want both. And your desire is, is my desire is almost as important as yours, apparently, in the show. And so bring it back to God. Say something in the next 30 seconds that, so that we can tie this together with the God Talk guys. Well, if God is love, right? If God is, but if God is erotic as well as, uh, as, well as caring love, then it's and that so then what the challenge is that you have your desires and I have my